Hello, I am Jody Wolf. You're watching Expose on March 27, 2016, 1.35 a.m. in Birmingham. And this is part two of what it's like to be socialist in Cuba. And, um, and I'm able to tell this by firsthand knowledge and uh, through a doctor that I have known since 1973. And um, we ended up being friends. And um, But his wife one day, she's one that asked me, she said, can I tell you a story? Or can I tell you our story? And my wife and I was there and I said, sure. She said, you know, we have uh, escaped from Cuba. I said, no, ma'am. I, I didn't know you need to escape from Cuba. She said, oh, yeah. She said, uh, you know, we're escaped, and if, if we're ever caught, they'll carry us back, and we'll be punished for it. And But she went on to explain the story that I just told you, and I'll pick up from there. And um, I told you what would happen if you – we're in the open trying to talk about Jesus and any uh, Sharia law believer, anybody that was a uh, Islamic, um, most Muslims, they'd have your head. Now, I don't mean jail. They have your head. Um, you don't talk about Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior period. But they, the way they, uh, also the way they treated families, they treated, now, now first, the government employees, which were um, the largest employer in Cuba by a hundred times is the government. You'll find places here and there that work on cars, but they don't have up-to-date parts. You find places that make furniture. They just make it out of tools, hand tools, not big band saws and stuff like this. They don't have those things except the things that they can keep repaired. And uh, so you have trades, but the people in trade, they don't make any money. Now, this new show I saw a few times about Cuban chrome um, also heard or read a piece when they were bargaining or trading for parts, asking enormous prices for something. And some guy said that was hogwash. That was all for the show, you know, being on our current TV since we are trying to open borders with them and and do this. And they love it because that gives the Cubans more than they ever had. It's only the elite. It's those in government, those who either govern or those who are secretaries, okay, the police works for the government, mayors, these things, they all work for the ju uh, government. Judges work for the government. And there aren't many of these because your own neighbor is your watchman or is your jailer, your own neighbor. And your own neighbor can be your brother or your sister. And I'm going to give you one example of what he told me. And when he told me this, he told me this the first 10 minutes that we sat down in Switzerland having lunch and was talking. And he and he'd ordered, his wife ordered something made out of or turkey, something. And I mean, they got a plate. He said, Lord, I've never seen one in my life this big. And uh, she said, you know, in Cuba, we don't have turkey. He said, really? She said, no. The family gets it. I said, the family? She said, Castro, the government, the family gets it. I said, really? She said, yeah. She said, people in the country, they get two chickens 
each year, except most years, they just get one. I said, ma'am, are you kidding me? She said, no. She said, Thanksgiving, they do have a Thanksgiving, they get a chicken. And on, on another holiday, and I don't recall which one it was, to be honest, it's probably somewhere around Christmas. They have Christmas the same time we do. She said, there's another day that they get a chicken. She said, but a person, whole family, and that can be 10 housefuls, will be punished by removing that very desired chicken from them if one person is caught doing something wrong. So they had everyone against everyone. Your neighbor looking over your fence to see what you're doing, but most of them live in apartments. 90% of them live in apartments. The ones that had homes were in the homes and are higher up as in political or in doctors or, or, you know, things of that nature. But just the common person that would go to school that didn't have a, a government employee as a father, they didn't, you know, they didn't get much of anything. And, and everything they made, the government gave to them. They weren't allowed to earn it but just very minute amounts of money at a time. But she said, and this is from her, and then, ironically, I heard a similar story many, many years later. Um, I don't know, maybe 35 years later. But she told me she clear, clearly remembers that she was in her house one day and her kids, two of her kids are there, and her husband's still at work. He's a doctor and hadn't got home yet. But she remembers a woman running down the street and the police coming down the street behind her, but they wasn't chasing that woman. She was pointing, and as she, as, as she said, she saw them go by and she looked out her window. She was lucky enough to have a window that faced the street and looked out the window and saw the woman pointing to a house, but the woman just kept running, kept going like nobody's business. So then after the woman had passed and she was completely out of sight, then the police came back down the street and pulled over at that house or that a, place where she had pointed out they were inside eating chicken illegal to have a chicken except on these two special days that man made a deal with somebody out in the country he rode a train to work every day by the way or bus and uh, made a deal with somebody way out of the country and the guy would kill him a chicken one day and he'd put it all in just his work bag and bring it back and he's going to have some fried chicken for he and his family. They didn't have one that year. She said that no one that year got one but the government. But you smell fried chicken if you're going down the road. You, you know what I'm talking about there. That happened. Lady that squealed on him was actually the family's aunt, the, the man, his sister, she squealed on him. So that family was, their chicken was taken away for the rest of that year and something for the next year. And they were penalized. And I don't know what way it was. I don't recall her saying that they'd gone to jail but they were certainly threatened with it and they were penalized in ways that she said having a chicken to eat and, and penalized in a severe way. She said there are most often the ones that have chickens or the people that live in houses 
And the people that live in open areas where the wind can blow it up and nobody can really find out where it's coming from, get by with it. But yet when they're caught, they are put in jail. Sometimes they're put in jail for 90 days. She said, they don't allow that stuff. And you're punished dearly for it. So I'm going to end this one. And there's a very short one I'll wrap it up with next. Jody Wolf Exposed.